I've always loved science fiction. It's a big element of what I put into the works. And yeah, it's always, um, on the one hand, um, I, I love depicting utopias. So, um, you know, there's some, there's some landscape paintings in this show that um, I think of as, you know, as you know, really depictions of, of utopia. And then on the other hand, you know, any time you have a utopia, there's the dark side. You know, there's the dark side that goes along that goes along with it. The, uh, you know, yeah, the total the total control, the Logan's Run type type scenario where you're, uh, you know, trapped in the dome and going to be uh, going to be zapped at the age of thirty. <laughs> well, that's interesting to see you depicting humans in some of the paintings in those clean suits, which people wear in those sort of contamination scenarios, and you know those big globes, the bubbles in the landscape. So that, that's like a future, very futuristic feeling, very science fiction feeling. Um, how do, what's your approach with those paintings? So the clean, the clean suit figures uh, I've painted for um, quite a while and they, they come primarily from the NASA archives. But, you know, it's the, it's the iconography, uh, particular iconography of uh, representations of science. And so, as you say, yes, those, those, um, those clean suits are very associated with um on the one hand yeah like that uh high precision work in a dust free environment or you know that that very contaminated uh disease laden type environment and so that's a nice little interplay that I, that I like to have and so when i put them into a landscape like that it's like are we protecting the landscape from the contamination of the humans or you know is it is it the other way around uh so it's a similar thing you know with the bubbles like there's that there's that membrane that's you know create it seems to create a barrier but you know anytime there's a barrier it's like that it's like that principle where you know anything always implies its opposite anywhere there's a barrier you got to remember it's never it's never going to be perfect there's always some some porosity between it I love surrealist painting uh, and, and surrealist artwork and um, I've always been I've always been fascinated by it you know going right back to when I first started making representational paintings and putting figures in it um, and of course, as soon as you put something recognisable in a painting, you start dealing with symbolism and meanings that are, that are being read into it. And I was very fascinated with that and kind of uneasy with it because it was a very different approach to art. And I was like really impressed with the surrealists because they just went, you know, straight to it. Like they went, they went kind of shy about having, oh, it's a symbolic meaning. Uh, but we don't really talk about that. No, they were just like, yeah, it's a symbolic meaning. <laughs> just, just deal with it. Yeah, yeah right. And so, and so I was very, I was very impressed with that. And um, I thought, yeah, I wonder if I can, wonder if I could, you know, kind of get to a similar place within, you know, within my own way that makes that makes um, makes sense to me. So, so yeah, I'm very, I'm very happy with the with the surrealism label. Sure. And uh, just on the issue of portraiture, do you enjoy doing portraiture? I mean, is that something that you are seeking to it's, do? It's it's not really a, a primary part of my part of my practice doing doing portraiture. Um, it's I like the like I like the challenge of it. You know, it's almost like as a uh, a skills development exercise. It's it's great to do a portrait. You know, once a year or, or twice a year. So. Because you know, when you like, as, a, as a primarily paint, um, you know, like non-human animals, you get a little bit of leeway because you know, like if like if the corner of the eye is a couple of millimeters out on like a polar bear, it's like eh, it's close enough. No, 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 no. <laughs> <Yeah>, it <that's laughs> still, still looks exactly like a polar bear. But if it's a, if it's a couple of millimeters out on you know on a human, it looks like a different person, and that's really you know, it's really disturbing. Yeah, that's right. It must feel pretty good having work in the National Portrait Gallery. It does. Yes, uh, I mean the, Nas- the National Portrait Gallery is such a is such a beautiful one to be in. But on- but honestly, any any time a painting ends up in a um, like in a public collection, you know, a, a university or a regional gallery, it's so great. Um, like it's so great to have a painting in a place where people are going to be able to you know see it, um, you know, and it'll exist. And all of, like all of the collections are you know are fantastic. Whenever you get a, get a chance to kind of go back and see them, it's amazing to see the paintings, and it's just so nice to have work. In that you know, in that company, in that in that environment, it's always yeah, it's always beautiful when that happens. <laughs>